and we're live <laughs> yay i see that a lot of you are already here hi everybody so it's our saturday live drawing i hope you have something to draw with today i'm going to be drawing in pen and today i'm going to do the thing um where i'm going to leave the questions more towards the end like the last 10 minutes so that um, i can actually properly answer your questions and properly or somewhat properly draw so that uh, by not trying to do two at the same time um, I'm not messing up one or the other so I see that a lot of you are here thank you bonjour everyone and you know we are in the middle we just finished the first week of drawing at home with France and my goodness guys 500 people have already signed up for the class. I'm so excited. Um, those of you who haven't, there must be a link. Yes, there is. There must be a link for the class. Yes, um, right underneath this video. And you can grab that class, but you can grab any other class um, at Sketchy. Uh, you get 20% off for two classes. Um, so go ahead, don't hesitate after this video if you're inspired by this and if you haven't joined yet, this is, uh, this is the time to do it, right? Um, so yeah, today I'm going to draw in pen. You guys have probably already seen our muse, but I'm going to uncover it now. This is Dylan Sarah. Um, I don't know if you guys got a chance to attend his live uh, not long ago, I want to say maybe a week and a half ago. Um, it was great to see him draw with like, um, you know, pieces of wood and sticks and stuff. I just, I'm mesmerized because I go to a store and I buy a plastic pen. Today, ballpoint. And by the way, um, let me see. Yes, this is a good, a good one. So you know that we have a choice of colors. And one thing I don't do a whole lot of when I use this one in particular is use the black ink. And today I'm going to use black ink. Um, it's going to be about 50 minutes of drawing, which means you guys know me, I'm slow by now. Um, I'm going to try to do as much as I can in 50 minutes, but uh, I can't guarantee that it's going to be anywhere near completion. So I'm turning on my little uh, tablet so that I can have Dylan uh, to my left. It's always good as a right-handed person to have my muse uh, to the left of what I draw. Hopefully it won't be too uh, distracting. Uh, how about if I put it here? But then it's, yeah, okay, that's fine because it's going to be probably, um, yeah, I'm gonna uncover, basically I'm, when I switch cameras, I'm going to uncover the, uh, the iPad so that you can see. Okay, I'm putting a little clip here. I'm going to draw in a moleskin today, my large moleskin, um, which is only about half of an A4. Okay. Um, and, oh, yeah, the link to the photo, guys. The, oh, the link is below, Jenny? The link, oh, yes, it is below. You're right. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jenny. And uh, Elijah, I hope you can see the link. And anyone who is just joining us right now, are you ready? We're drawing in pen, but it doesn't mean that you have to draw in pen. I'm doing it in pen because this week in pen, next week in Procreate, and the week after that in pencil. This is kind of like, not exactly, but kind of like the rotation that we're doing in this class, Drawing at Home with France, where on Monday we draw in pen, uh, Wednesday we do pencil, Friday we do Procreate, but again, I've seen so many of you just using your own media. It's it's great, really. Um, as long as we draw, right? Frankly, that's all that matters. Okay. All right. So I'm going to switch camera because enough about this face here. The face that I'm interested in is Dylan's. So it's right here now. It's on my iPad. And I'm not going to draw very big uh, today because, of course, the bigger we draw, uh, the less we can accomplish. So I'm gonna, you know, gonna try to cover as much as I can. But I also know that I'm slow. All right, turning towards the uh, the window. Today is cold in the northeastern United States. It feels like December. Okay, um, I want to start you off with something uh, very loose. 
Uh, you guys know that I'm going to cross hatch um, today because I'm using pen. This is really the the way I do it. It doesn't mean that's the right way to do it, but that's how I do it. Um, and oh, I see a question here that I want to address, uh, Beatrice. That's a great question. Can I use paper by 53? Yes, you can. You know, it's called paper by WeTransfer now because WeTransfer bought. Uh, 53, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that'd be great. You don't have to use Procreate. I really like the simple approach of, uh, of paper um, over Procreate sometimes. So yes, Beatrice, by all means. Okay, guys, so let's wipe that pen. In fact, I should probably like wipe it at the top here, okay? And um, I'm going to start with some very basic lines which I can't erase afterwards, right? We can't because we're doing things in pen. I mean, I'm doing things in pen. I see that uh, Uta, you are working with fountain pen. Oh, no, you're, tell you're telling me that fountain pen once again would be great. You're right, fountain pen would be fun. Um, next time we do a pen, I should probably do a fountain pen, but I'm not sure that I would want to use my moleskin then. Um, I'm going with ballpoint kind of like as a safety measure. I don't know, but uh, yeah. Uh, Gustavo would prefer seeing the image as it was before. Absolutely. I mean, I can. Uh, if you guys are okay with the photo over the photo, and oh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to just make this a little larger, and hopefully you guys can work with that. Is that okay like this? Yeah? Okay. And uh, Trisha, the photo is right underneath this uh, video. It says reference photo. You can't go wrong. Okay. And <laughs> I can't help it. But yes, Jackie, my muse would suggest a dip pen. There's no doubt about it. Okay, so ballpoint, guys. Um, let's start with very simple um, reference lines. I'm going to start with the top of uh, Dylan's glasses and kind of work my way uh, like this, okay? Wiping my pen a little bit, and now just diving in somehow. I hope you guys see what I can do, what I'm doing. Okay, it's very faint. Uh, let me see if I can lower the dark, uh, lower the brightness, I mean. Okay, let's see. So starting with a straight line, which is going to be where I'm going to fit, uh, Dylan's glasses right there without going too much into details at first I just want to kind of set where they're going to be there's going to be a lens here there's going to be a lens a little smaller because a little bit of perspective here is playing a little trick um, eyebrows my lines are super faint. Uh, allow me to start extremely lightly right now. You can probably barely see this, and and I'm sorry, but that's really just the start. I'm I'm just loosening up here, trying to get um, you know, my marks without worrying about leaving uh, construction lines on my uh, on my paper because uh, I don't care. And by the way, this is not me telling you not to use. Um, uh, pencil first. You can use pencil first and then work in pen. Okay. Uh, oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, Anne, the iPad is messing with my exposure because it's so dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're absolutely right. So let me follow your advice. Oof, this is not going to be great, but maybe, maybe I can make it work. Okay, by putting Dylan here. Is this a little better, everybody? Yeah. Thank you, Anna. That was a great piece of advice, which sometimes um, I'm just unable to actually think of. So I'm putting Dylan here. What do you guys say? Yeah? Okay. And um, an interesting request here. Demonstrate curve cross-hatching. Thank you. Trust me, it's going to curve plenty. And as I go, I'm going to take... Um, oh yeah, that's perfect. I have scrap paper everywhere. This is from, this is from school. Yeah, this is not great. But yeah, I can use probably this... Um, no, it's not going to work. I need a scrap piece of paper. 
Oh, jeez. Hmm. Okay, believe it or not, I am kind of at a loss. Oh, no, no, I am not. I'm going to use uh, just some graph paper on the side, and I will demonstrate like that. So, there. Okay. All right, because I am going to probably uh, have to explain a couple of things on the side. Okay, all right, good. So you guys can see fine. I'm, I'm glad. Okay, so as you know, we were just kind of establishing where where things kind of should should be. We've got the top of Dylan's finger here, uh, his forehead kind of going in that direction, though I'm, I'm not going to commit to it yet. We have the top of his head, which you, I don't know if you can see where I am, but that, don't worry about it because this is not what I'm interested in. I'm really interested in his features and the glasses because that's that's what I love doing personally. Okay, I'm gonna try not to to go into the details yet because I I would be tempted to otherwise. Pushing the brightness on my iPad. Okay, all right. Um, this nose goes like this and remember that at the end of the nose it's usually a ball so I want to I want to materialize this a little bit with um, yeah with a ball but we're not going to see it later I'm not sure I'm pretty sure it's going to go away all right Okay. I hope everybody had a good week, wherever you are uh, in the world. Uh, it's been it's been a wild ride, uh, weather-wise. Out here in the northeast. Okay, um, I'm slowing down already, which is not a good thing. I need to continue being loose. What am I doing? There we go. Okay. It's funny, this morning when I decided that, uh, because I decided this morning, that this would be uh, my muse, I just sat while drinking my tea, and I made a rough, uh, rough, sort of sketch to see if I was capable of doing it in pen and I ended up doing this by the way this is like French stuff for my my French classes throughout the week um, so I ended up doing this sort of to to figure out whether I could do it or not like very quickly so okay um, keep in mind that I will answer uh, as much as I can the questions that you have towards the end of this broadcast so I'm gonna end about 10 minutes uh, earlier than I usually would in order to answer any questions. So if you have some right now, please, you know, keep them for a little later. Um, as I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to get it done. Because <laughs> if I don't, it's just gonna be a, uh, it's just gonna be one of those. Uh, oh, I was only able to do this today. Oh, I'm already slow as it is, but. Okay, this line here is for the uh, the glasses themselves. Okay. And this mustache goes like this, and here there's a shadow. And right there is the edge of uh, Dylan's beard. My gosh, this is super, super sketchy, right? Um, that's That's what I need, though, in pen. Because um, unless I do this, yeah, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work great. We don't have an eraser today, right? <laughs> we don't have that luxury. Okay, I'm just gonna say this is just about right. Um, uh -huh, there's a ear back here. Let me see if I'm at the right height. Yeah, but again, it's not really my my main focus. The ear, okay. I do start loose. I have to. I that is something that I kind of 
um, I learned by myself as I as I started drawing more and more in pen. I knew that this was the only way to to not completely get lost in too many details right away and then lose proportions. So um, if you take the class uh, Drawing at Home with France, uh, you'll see on Monday we're going to do pen. And um, I am also going to start fairly loosely, but I think even looser than that, you will see uh, on week uh, three, uh, there's a lot of looseness uh, happening in that in that particular portrait. Oh boy, it's loose. It's loose because it has to be. It just has to. Okay, going pretty thinly here on my... Um, I mean thinly. I'm not putting much pressure at all on my on my pen and I'm wiping it now right on the on the page because again I'm not you know putting this in the museum afterwards okay so and uh oh Elijah you are using a pink ball paint ball pen a uh, ballpoint pen that's great okay awesome awesome Elijah that's that's bold I like that all right Same when you when you start introducing the eyes, just um, don't hesitate to go super super lightly, so that they come out somewhat okay. Uh, yes, so this is the eyelashes, and the eyelid is right up on top here, and of course. You guys know um, that when we have um, not a frontal view, not completely three-quarter, but definitely not a frontal uh, view, we definitely are, are dealing with eyes that are not going to be uh, symmetrical at all in terms of what they look like, you know? All right, the moment I commit to where I want a line to be, I'm putting a little more pressure on on my pen, needless to say. Did you notice that on top of uh, both of uh, his his rims, there's a little light, a little line of light, um, and uh, it's good to leave that out. So I'm going to try to convey that by just going under this. We'll see if it works. And I'm going to try to leave that uh, as negative space, you know. It's actually not um, horrible to have my iPad a little further away. It might play tricks on me a little, but I guess we'll find out how. I don't know why I don't like this yet, but okay. Maybe I'll, I'll find a way to make peace with it. Did you notice also that in Dylan's iris there is a uh, light? So because we're drawing in pen, I have to make it. Also, a little bit of negative space. It's really looking weird right now, but don't worry. So what is the color of Dylan's eyes? Is it uh, blue, I, I think? Are they blue, blue-green? There's definitely uh, quite a bit of light in, in those eyes. 
So you see how I've got this uh, this little reflection of light in the in the iris. Keep in mind, those of you who are joining uh, joining us, that this is part of um, this whole month of drawing at home with France, and uh, we're. We're drawing every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday like this, just drawing along. I'm, I'm giving little tips here and there. And um, it's a lot of fun. If you haven't joined the class yet, uh, please do as uh, my classes. If you grab two, you get 20% off. So you can do that. And maybe another class that I teach could be cross hatching or portraits in Procreate. Um, choice, there is choice. There's definitely choice at Sketchy for the things uh, you wanna you wanna learn. Okay, here's second iris, and this time, can you guys see? Okay, yeah. Okay, guys, don't. Don't worry, we are not going to finish this. We are just going to draw for now and see how far we go. Um, something that I want to point out, though, is that I'm drawing directly into my moleskin. I did not, in fact, put a, um, a clipboard underneath what I'm drawing, even though that's usually my habit, you know, to harden the surface that I'm drawing on. I'm not doing that today. I could have, I just didn't. I'm really being fussy into, you know, the detail of, uh, of Dylan's eye, my goodness. Okay, this is where his eye lashes are. And things are going to get fairly dark here. Just as they are dark there too. Keep in mind, always leave that line right underneath the uh, iris um, in negative space so that you don't have a line right underneath uh, someone's iris. So we're going to place the eyelashes a little below that. Leave it just a little breathing space. And then darken here if you want, but not much. All right. I know a lot of you uh, probably have um, noticed that because Dylan has a has a beard uh, that's that's who I went for for the muse today but it's really not the beard that um, that got me in this photo it's of course the expression of his eyes um, he also has like this uh, expression in his mouth that I thought would be fun to try to um, you know to convey like teeth it's always it's always difficult we like a good challenge over here right I do. All right. Um, you know, in, in glasses, you've got this little piece here. And also where his nose is. Somewhere here, it reveals just a little bit of the corner of the eye on the other side. It's crazy. My ballpoint pen really starts out like a dark gray. Maybe this is why I tend to lean towards these um, quote unquote cheap bics. This is a big pen that I'm using. 
uh, because I just love that um, just like with a pencil you get a little range of grays before you dig into uh, the black so yeah I don't know maybe I will go into uh, the beard I, I, I cannot guarantee though that it's going to go this fast you know what else I love about drawing in pen is that when I do I don't have to worry too much about smearing because it's pen and it dries fairly quickly I mean now if I were to smear this it wouldn't be pretty um, but I feel a little freer you know drawing here before drawing there whereas in pencil I will always go from uh, from west to east as you guys have probably heard me refer to these areas as Okay, the moment I decide that I'm quote-unquote safe to, to add dark, like for example right here, um, I'm going to want to do this in, uh, in cross-hatching mainly. So that gesture is usually one of pulling towards me like this, right? Which means that Ideally, if I continue doing this, I'm going to flip this around a little bit. Okay, bear with me. And right now, nothing is curvy. We are doing um, the top of Dylan's glasses. So I'm just filling in. But I'm definitely putting pressure on my pen here because I want to achieve the, the black that I need. Okay, keep in mind that we have a little bit of light uh, over in this area here on top of his the rim of his glasses. So I'm going to try to make that appear. I can feel just as I'm putting a little bit more pressure on my pen that is just like going into the page. Oh my goodness. It is really digging in. so far and talking of you know getting into a dark area there's an eyebrow here which is going to be dark In order um, not to go into lighter areas, I'm going to draw a line where this eyebrow is going to stop. I mean, eyebrow and shadow, so that I don't go into this too much. And you can do the same in all the light areas in 
uh, in Dylan's face. There's one here, there's one right there. So by making these little boxes, I'm um, isolating the, the light areas that I don't want to touch by mistake, right underneath his glasses here. There's going to be quite a bit of light right there too. Lots of light here because it looks as though the light is coming in this direction. So for example, this whole area on his uh, forehead should be definitely left alone, whereas this area here is going to be much more uh, shaded. And here I am battling the elements, meaning the softness of a page with a pen that needs to, to go dark but can't right away, so it's going to be layers there. So it's still not the, the dark that I want to achieve. Um, okay. But it's getting there. Eyebrows can be a little messy, so it And this is going to take us to uh, to the part on his on the temple uh, where things are a little curved. So uh, someone earlier was asking me, how do you do this this curving of uh, of cross hatching, right? So with this pen, or maybe you know what, I'm going to take a second here to to show you how how I do it. So I've got a, a blue pen, but it's a ten, so it's going to show really what I'm talking about. Um, this is fairly, fairly um, dark. You know, when you do a curve, you can curve like this, right? Um, and then after that, when you go over it again to go darker, don't go this way, which would be almost perpendicular. Go just a little more. Because the whole thing about cross-hatching is where the lines intersect. This is where things, interesting things happen, like your eye suddenly is, is seeing things. And so as you, as you just move a little more this way, you can really achieve something interesting. Now this is if you want to achieve something super, super dark. So you see, I just went something like this, then I went like this. You know, basically you just cross hatch um, at an angle like this. You can do that. And if you only have one layer of cross hatching, then you just curve wherever it is. But one thing is for sure, uh, no matter whether you go with a long, a longer streak or a shorter little, you know, little one like this, either way, Just don't forget to curve and go slowly. That's really like, for me, uh, I notice that the drawings that I end up being frustrated with, I'm not happy about, I'm like, why didn't this work? I just realized that I was really going fast and it's not my style. It's just not the way I do it. So um, we're gonna have a curve going this way, right? So imagine we're going to go over a surface that, of course, is not a, a ball itself, but we are going to have to curve according to that shape, you see? That's the whole idea. That's why I, I keep saying that cross-hatching 
uh, is more like sculpting than anything else because you're trying to create um, a 3D effect out of a flat piece of paper and out of a, a fairly flat photo too when you think about it, okay? So let's take a look at um, what we can do here now. Okay, I'm wiping my pen again because, you know, ballpoint pen. They drool. And now I'm going to apply this, but I'm going super, super, super lightly. Like I am not putting the kind of pressure that I put here on here, okay? Now, <laughs> okay, going like this. Now I'm going over it. I'm going so lightly that my pen hardly registered on there. Okay. Barely. Here we are. Um, I shouldn't forget, though, that I have to deal with a piece of uh, his eyeglasses there. All right, we're going to have the hairline here, but that's okay. I'm just going to go right over it because the hairline is just darker. Okay. Curving and going really slowly, taking my time. I'm in no rush to something. That's the thing about cross hatching is you just have to to let the dark reveal itself very gradually. Okay. Oh my gosh! I should teach in uh, in French. Dylan, hi, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> Your six-year-old says you've done a... Oh, thank you. Can you tell him thank you? I don't know if I'm... Uh, I don't know if I'm going to continue doing a good job, okay, Dylan? I'm going to try. I'm going to try, but I'm glad that he's... Uh, he's approving of this. Okay, so Anne, you want to take some French with me? Tu veux apprendre le français avec moi? Si tu veux, hein? pas de problème. Um, yeah, I could do like, uh, I could do this in French. That would be a lot of fun. I just don't have all the vocabulary, it seems like, because all the technical vocab of drawing, I mostly uh, acquired in my adult years. And um, it's funny, I'm not sure that I, I would know all of this in French, but you know what, I would give it my best, my best shot. Okay. By the way, Dylan, uh, let us know. Oh, yes, he does approve. That's great. Um, does your son um, draw too? Like, is he drawing along with us? I'd be interested. Uh, I'd be interested to know. Bah oui, je parle français parce que je suis française. C'est ça. Je suis une petite française. I love when kids draw along with us. That's cool. And then at the end, they always come up with some like more creative way to do something. Oh, here's a curvy little hatching that's going to happen here. Okay, you ready? So because we are in this area now, I need to curve. It's just how it is. Again, flipping things around, right? Not going into this light area, which I, I already made a line so that I wouldn't go into it. Okay, moving. Uh, oh my goodness, I'm really moving. Extremely slowly, but that's well, it's not too surprising because when I draw in pen, um, I'm a lot more uh, tentative than uh, you know when I have the luxury to erase, even though I'm slow there too. As those of you who were here last week witnessed, so you see that line here that I'm trying to leave alone. That's the, the light right above uh, Dylan's rim, the rim of his glasses. <laughs> I 
Ja. Okay. Um, I am leaving this alone for now, but clearly it should be much, much darker. But I'm going to leave it alone for now because I have other things to do like this. Okay. And also um, down the, the side of Dylan's nose, we want to try that. Okay. Thank you, guys. Uh, je suis contente d'avoir des fans françaises uh, au Maroc. Et Saouira. Je connais, je connais cette, cette ville. Enfin, je suis jamais allée, mais c'est magnifique. Je, je sais que c'est magnifique. Et je ne dois pas la prononcer bien, mais bon. Peut-être que tu peux me corriger, Christine, de Mogador. Uh, oh my gosh, Gwen, tu es là <rire> Je ne savais pas que tu étais là. Wow, ça fait plaisir. OK, uh, inside, you know, the lens of, uh, of any eyeglasses, there's a little, tiny little bit of white where it meets the rim. OK, can you guys still see? Yeah. So here I am. My first layer of cross hatching, guys, is always extremely light and slow. Light as in I barely uh, put pressure on my pen. It's only when I go for the third, fourth, sometimes fifth layer that I feel safe adding a little bit of um, pressure on my pen. And don't forget that in about seven minutes, I am going to put down my, my pen, get away from my moleskin, and I'm going to answer any questions that you might have over this, over maybe, you know, the class, those of you who are taking a uh, drawing at home with France, um, you might have questions from what we did this week. You know, how did you feel about that portrait uh, in pencil that we did, Mandy? Um, how did Rick go yesterday? Remember, we, we had Rick in Procreate. Gosh, so much fun. Such a beautiful profile. I was so impressed with the work that you guys did. Um, not to, to single out people, but I'm going to... Jenny, the, what you did in Procreate, the, the stark strokes that you used, oh, that was glorious. I really absolutely loved the, the approach that you had there. All right, little curvy, curvy things there. So questions about basically anything related to drawing. whether it's something that uh, you're struggling with or that you're not struggling with and you just want to share, it's cool. Can you guys see, sorry, all the way at the top there. My computer, my MacBook, um, it's turning five years old this month. Um, it's, it's, I don't know, it's acting in, in goofy ways these days. Whenever I use, uh, you know, this particular software to talk to you guys live, uh, it's giving me, 
It's giving me sounds that I don't like hearing from a computer. Little, uh, you know, like I'm about to take off from the runway kind of sounds. Okay. Um, all right, I, I need to do this. I can't just walk away from from this without at least going into that that forehead a little bit there. Do you see how we have a tiny bit of dark right above the eyebrow? I really don't want to neglect that. I'm going very slowly. And now ideally what I what I want to do is show you when I go over, now I add a little bit of pressure and now the pen is going to want to do one thing and that's drool. The pen is going to want to drool now, okay? Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm just looking at uh, uh, this comment. I had my 11-year-old MacBook finally die last year. I replaced and upgraded almost every part that I could. Yes, yes, getting compressed air and blowing out the fan. I think uh, that might be a good idea. Yeah, and I, I heard that also lifting it up uh, from, from the surface of the desk could help sometimes. All right, you guys, uh, I didn't even do this in very dark ink, so I'm going to... It's funny how a pen like this starts out so gray. And how many layers it take it takes to to achieve something somewhat dark. Guys, keep in mind that if you are interested in doing something exclusively cross-hatching, um, there's also a cross-hatching class that I teach at uh, Sketchy. And if you want to dig into the Procreate aspect of things, there's a Procreate class for that that I also do. Lisa Fillon is also a great um, Procreate whiz. At sketchy. Um, so basically you see how like how slowly this builds right? Oh my goodness. All right. I think uh, what you've just described is uh, is it's pretty much it, although not every every face does the same thing, but um, I think that your comment go very light with pressure at first. Yeah, turn the paper. Look, I turn the paper, not everybody does. I know this is definitely my preference when I, when I crosshatch to have a certain motion, uh, a certain comfortable motion. Not everybody will, will do the same thing, I don't think. Um, but I'm a big fan of uh, flipping things around. I want to finish by doing this little area here because I don't want to neglect this. I told you that this would be curved, and it is. All right. Thank you, Dana. I'm so glad. Okay, um, I might be tempted. Uh, there's also an, another uh, drawing underneath this, this piece of paper that I am in the process of finishing for my uh, uh, Drawing at Home with France uh, class. It's right there, you guys, um, because I draw on every page. Um, but right now I have to leave it alone and maybe if I have a relaxing hour between uh, between grading uh, my students uh, speech in French this week and uh, between you know doing laundry and making dinner I will probably be able to uh, 
to get back to it because this this uh, particular expression, uh, Dylan, really speaks to me. I absolutely love it. Love it. So we've we've achieved uh, not much, obviously, <laughs> um, but again, that just that just goes to show that when you get into this kind of uh, technique where you build only with a very thin line, uh, you end up just having to slow down. So, okay. Uh, thank you, Al Lopez, for being here, and thank you for your sweet words. I'm going to put down my, um, my pen for now. Leave it right here. And if you guys have any questions that um, you want to ask me, maybe regarding uh, the classes that I teach at Sketchy or just, you know, technique, um, let me know. Let's, let's talk. It's uh, 9 to 1 here uh, in Eastern Time. Um, and uh, first of all, okay, Anne, thank you so much. I'm, I'm really happy that we've had so far uh, 500 people sign up for the class. If you guys want to join us, it's only the end of the first week of May. Uh, you can also follow exactly what we're doing during this class in May. You can push it to June. You can postpone anything. Also, I don't want you to feel pressured to do the Monday drawing on Monday. You can do it on Tuesday. You can sit on it. You can do two one day. This is by no means, um, you know, a, a drill. I really don't want you to feel that way. This is just a way to, to build a drawing habit. So, okay. Uh, Thank you, thank you, thank you. Et Christine, uh, le temps passe beaucoup trop vite. Uh, I totally agree that time really flies when we do these things. So, okay. Uh, Teresa, you have such a great question. Um, the wrinkles is something that, and, and it, this is not me trying to avoid explaining it to you here, but um, there is a class that I teach about drawing wrinkles. And I really go into depth, okay? into how to deal with uh, not making them too um, cartoony, how to blend things, how to see where the light hits, all that is covered in uh, drawing wrinkles, uh, in my class drawing wrinkles. So take a look at it, take a look at the intro, you might be interested in uh, getting into it. Um, unfortunately, this would be a long demonstration for, for this particular format. So I am going to try to Read all your questions. I hope it's okay. All right. Um, mm -hmm. um, awesome. Oh, my goodness. Uh, shot 53 tattoo. You've taken the eyes, uh, the cross-hatching, and the drawing at home. Oh, my gosh. I'm so glad that you that you progressed, and that's how you, you feel. Thank you so much. Uh, Beatrice, it's pushing you out of your comfort zone. I'm glad. If you don't mind, you guys, I'm going to go back to uh, being a little bigger on the, on the screen. Um, and yes, you, 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 I'm so glad that you, you just were able to start directly in pen and, uh, and just, yeah. Okay, that's, that's great. Elijah. Okay, so Elijah, that's such an inter interesting question. Like that transition between those sketchy lines that we do at first into, oh, I'm going to sneeze, I'm sorry, <coughs> I apologize. So Elijah, you were talking about how to move from these very sketchy lines to something maybe a little more uh, uh, confident and committed. Um, for me, it's whenever, you know, for example, you do three lines, right, and they're, they're very sketchy, you choose the one you want, and now you just apply a little bit of pressure with your pen. I do the same thing in pencil. And then little by little, um, what was three lines becomes one and becomes darker. And, and the lighter lines disappear. It's really, it's kind of like a selection. Um, yeah, it's a selection game, so to say. I hope, oh, Elijah, I hope I answered your question. Um, oh my gosh, yes, Dylan. Thank you for... Um, for pointing this out, if anyone wants to come draw with us Tuesdays, uh, check out uh, Dylan's Instagram, Dylan underscore 
Sarah. Thanks, Dylan. I appreciate that. Um, oh, Betty, I love that question. Um, why do you choose to add a toned background in Procreate or just change the color of the background? What are the benefits of either? If you have, and I think, uh, sorry, Dylan's right here, Dylan's uh, photo is a perfect example of a reference photo that I would like to start on a toned background so that you see the light that's on his forehead, the light underneath his eyes. There, the light is so stark, it's so, uh, it's so much of a contrast with the, the black of his hair that if you have a toned background, then you can go in white and make that light um, show even more. But if it's a photo where the contrast may not be as strong, then I would be tempted to just draw on a white piece of paper. Does that make, make sense? So I think you just like, it's just like upping the contrast the moment that you, you choose to draw uh, with a toned background. I hope I answered your question. Uh, well, uh, thank you, Christopher McKay. Thank for yet. Thank you for yet another free Saturday session, sketchy in France. Absolutely, sir. My pleasure. I like that kitty on your photo. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad I hear this. Um, you can accelerate your your skills. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, so, Cindy, for me, proportions are everything. This is where the looseness at the beginning of a drawing is crucial. You have to first decide where you're going to start, you know, like your face, where you're going to want to end it, right? So if you determine this on your piece of paper or on your iPad, wherever you're drawing, then somehow everything has to fit in that. And once you start by... I hate to say it, but limiting yourself that way, then you can really play around at first with those very loose lines and see how they compare with your subject. And trust me, by just loosening up at first, um, you will achieve that. It will take practice, uh, as everything does, um, but this is really the, the trick, in my opinion. Okay, Monique, I'm so glad that uh, you haven't you haven't started. That's fine, uh, but I'm glad that you're taking the class. That's really good. Okay, um, yes, Beata, this is the idea. It should keep you drawing. It should you know sort of uh, motivate you to be uh, to be at the page, right? <laughs> okay. Um... Oh, very good question. Do you ever draw with the brush uh, on? paper no but as you've seen me maybe do on procreate i usually start with something broad at first and that helps me with the foundation yep um yes pam okay that's an excellent question on cross hatching the whitest white i leave alone absolutely but the skin that is medium you go you cross hatch lightly absolutely so if i were to explain this this is exactly what i did uh here I went from a very dark area, but obviously it was going lighter and lighter until that very white area. This is not as strong as this. And that's the idea, is that once you put one layer of cross hatching and you think you've got the, the right amount of, you know, the value that you want, then you pause. You just, you don't go any further than that. And that could, that could be enough. Now, if later in the drawing you feel like, ah, oh, you know what, I could have gone a little darker, then you go back because really cross hatching is layering. That that's all it is. So yes, Pam, that that is definitely what I do. Uh, okay. Um, and you're you're also pointing out something that I never do, which is use the grid in order to keep track of proportions. I've never done it, um, but I think it helps a lot of people. Absolutely. Um, no, Gabo, uh, that's an excellent question. Have I tried to do some cross hatching using different colors of the big pen at the same time? I am not that advanced. <laughs> I like things being monochromatic and so far I've been happy with that. Uh, but I know that I, I have so much that I can learn. There's no doubt about it. Absolutely. Um, okay. 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 
All right, and Dylan, um, okay, excellent. Sharon, what do you do when making mistakes in pen? I put down my pen. I lie on the floor in a fetal position and I rock back and forth until the anxiety goes away. I mean, really, drawing in pen, that's the risk. <laughs> No, I mean, seriously, I have walked away from drawings when when I messed up things. But mostly what I try to do is if I did draw in pen and it was light enough, like, you know, those construction lines, they were very light. Um, obviously, that is not a big deal because it, you can go, just go over it again and again in pen and it won't be a problem. So... That's not too bad. So yeah, if I mess up in pen, I mess up in pen. Um, I just try to cover it up, frankly. Okay, and yes, Marcel, I think you are definitely, just looking at your work, you are definitely just getting better and better. Yeah. And yes, I will do some more this month, definitely. Okay, so the beard, I would have to really go... Um, just as I did with the uh, the eyebrow, just go very dark, but not right away. Just build my darks, but instead of stopping after two or three layers, I would just keep going and make it much darker. Absolutely. Um, you know, there's that moment, Erica, uh, where I determine um, that my shapes are all right, and whatever I'm going to do after that, is going to be just filling in. Um, there's a moment where I feel happy with the lines that I've drawn, and I know that those lines correspond to the person. Now, whether this really looks like Dylan, to tell you the truth, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not even sure right now. Um, but there's a moment where those lines seem like, okay, the proportions are right. Now I'm going in. Um, it's... It's pretty organic. Uh, yeah, France is my real name, absolutely. My mom wanted to um, name me something monosyllabic so that by the time she was done calling me to come back in, I wouldn't be, uh, you know, too far away. Yep. Uh, okay. So, guys, uh, oh, my gosh. Teeth, Lorena. Uh, teeth will be in... A negative space at first and then I'm going to very lightly cross hatch over where it's a little bit hidden I don't know if you see in Dylan's um, face very lightly so the cross hatch would have to to be extremely light as it usually is okay oh Caroline really you have it's interesting huh? okay yes they are tricky to draw um, yes, my gosh, uh, Tukan, I, I like your question. Yes, I do use a lot of, um, although it's slightly different, but I use a lot of Pigma pens. So actually I have one right here. Uh, you guys know the Pigma 05, probably. This is this pen here. And I do a lot of cross hatching with that too. The thing with that is that when the pen is brand new and goes dark, um, I don't like it as much, but when it starts getting a little old and your, uh, your first lines can be a little lighter, then that's great. So that's how I treat um, any other pen, to tell you the truth. But I get more flexibility from ballpoint because you can really start lightly with a ballpoint pen. Yes, Jennifer, I'm glad to hear that, that you've received a four-color um, Bic. By the way, I want to show you something about these uh, these bics. I have another one here. Did you notice that this one is orange, but I was drawing today with um, a blue one? The difference between the blue one and the orange one, the blue one is medium, the orange one is fine. I don't like drawing in fine uh, as much. It doesn't give me as much flexibility. Uh, there's also, if you go online, you can buy, you can buy whole boxes of them. And this, for instance, is a fancy one. Um, it's actually silverish. <laughs> it's silly, but um, 
it works also. And I believe the silver is medium, but I haven't been able to quite determine whether that's true or not. So I'm just sticking with the blue one right now. Okay, guys. All right, I'm going to wrap it up. Um, do you ever use the brush? You mean on paper? No. Uh, but sure, maybe one day I'll have the time to, um, to learn myself and maybe uh, do more of that. I'm not excluding that possibility. Um, very good question, Joe. Would I have gotten more done if I had been on Procreate? Absolutely. Um, first of all, because you can you can build layers in, in different ways on Procreate as you do in pencil, whereas in pen, you are really stuck with this width. That's it. And so whenever you want to achieve dark, it takes it's more tedious. It takes more time. Absolutely, that I, I would have gone further. Whether I would have finished uh, Dylan under one hour, I do not know. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Okay. Hmm. The background could have also, uh, Duke, that's a good question. The background could have also been tackled uh, with cross hatching. I used to do a lot of that when I used to cross hatch. Um, with these kinds of pens. I kind of let them down after a few years, but oh, I don't even. Ah, there you go. Have you ever drawn with a Pilot v, uh, V7? These are great. Um, I would do that with that. I would basically do the, the contour of the face with that. Okay, um, guys, I'm gonna go. Um, Oh, okay, June, I will answer this one because really this is an interesting question. Whenever I get to an area like, okay, are you with me here? This or this? These are really big areas to draw usually on the face and where the curve is fairly easy to do. Then my cross hatching gets a little longer. But when I get into areas that are, of course, uh, much smaller and if I want to be a little more deliberate in my lines uh, then I go much shorter. I hope that answers your question uh, June. Okay so guys I'm gonna go oh, sorry that I can't answer um, da -da -da. okay um, you would have to ask about discounts directly to sketchy app because I do not decide that these um, so go on Sketchy Art School if you want and ask those questions. That would be great. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes, Ute, but I'm glad that you guys... See, this is what I love. I'm glad that you guys are just willing to um, um, just get out of your comfort zone and do something that you're not used to. Absolutely. Okay. Um, Dario, I think that if you make drawing a habit, you're not going to be afraid of practicing and practicing and practicing. So I think that taking this class, this is what we're doing now, which is drawing at, at home with friends, this definitely gets you into the groove of making drawing almost a daily habit or a daily habit if you, if you put your own time into it. So I would say, yeah, this class would be a great starter for then um, take another class, no doubt about it. Okay, guys, thank you for being here um, today. I cannot take every single questions. Um, I wish I could. Um, okay. And Beata, I will put this in. You want to say that the sketchy community has been so amazing and supportive and has reignited my passion for drawing. After years of not having time, I know that. I know. Okay. <laughs> um, everybody, thank you for being here. I wish I could uh, go through every every single question. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm getting a little uh, sniffly. Okay, everyone, can I keep some of these questions for next week? Uh, please hold on to anything you want to ask me. If you are in the drawing with France, uh, drawing at home with France, please uh, ask me these questions within each lesson. You know I can answer those online. And um, I will see you again next Saturday. Next Saturday, which is uh, May the 16th, we are going to draw and procreate everybody. 
I'm going to have to go. Guys, thank you for being here with me today. I really appreciate that um, you drew along. Let's post everything that we have in Sketchy Art School in uh, Drawing with France group. It's free. And take a look at any class that you want to take underneath this video. Um, there are links right there underneath the video for um, to go to Sketchy uh, Shop and see what classes you want to take. So two for twenty is the uh, is the link is the code for uh, for the discount. Guys, thank you for being here today. I appreciate your time, but mine has to stop here. I have other commitments, and unfortunately. I have to say goodbye for now. I will see you next Saturday, okay? Everyone, see you soon. Bye, thank you for being here. Au revoir tout le monde. Peace. Distante, bien sûr. Absolument.